Good afternoon, ham radio fans. It's KBYP working inside because it's bready hot outside. It's working on 100 again. Been testing the uh, coax to the 15 meter antennas, cheap RG58 and an LMR400. And as predicted, the, the RG58 has 3 dB loss at, at 15 meters, so it's junk. It's real important and real easy. And this is a good basic radio experiment, by the way, to find coax loss, get a signal generator, and build yourself a classic diode probe. Get yourself a diode, try to get two picofarad or less capacitance. Shun it with one to 100 picofarad and put that into a 10 mega ohm DMN. You'll have a dandy RF probe. Makes no difference how accurate it is. All you care about is relative measurements. Then get yourself a dB chart, compare voltages. Voltage at the source, voltage across the length of cable into a dummy load, 50 ohm load. So easy peasy, and you don't need 3,000 bucks worth of equipment like I used. But it's fun. But that is not the point of this video. The point of this video is the Yesu hiding in the background was used yesterday to test the new 15 meter NFED, which was probably uh, probably about a two to one SWR. Now there are lots of folk out there that will tell you that doesn't really matter because it's not that much power reflected. Well, did you know it's a violation of FCC regulations to do that? Did you know there's a whole lot more problems than that with it? Because what the watt meter can't tell you, and it was it was about 60 forward and 50, 15 reflected, so you can calculate the SWR. But out yonder windows, the end fed is off that corner of the house, and about 60 feet into the backyard is the 80 meter, oh, 128 foot long dipole. And they're parallel, so the 80 meter antenna is making a pickup for the 15 meter end fed. So I was transmitting with the ASU and receiving on the restored Kenwood 430. And this is banging in a 60 over signal. Of course, the antennas are not quite touching. So extremely strong signal in the Kenwood. And what I have never, never seen and never measured is this idea that reflective power also causes distortion. The theory is that traveling wave fronts in the coax collide and distort the signals. Well, what's that mean? I don't know. I've never seen it discussed. I've never seen a, a display of it until yesterday. I keyed down with the ASU and I tuned to the strong signal on the Kenwood, nice clean tone. And as I tuned up, the signal went away. A little bit of 60 hertz noise from uh, power supply leakage. And as I tuned up a couple KC, lo and behold, there's another carrier from the ASU and it shouldn't be there. It's spurious. Now, not only can the watt meter not indicate frequency, it's not a wave meter. It's just a general broadband watt meter. See, it can't tell us that having that mismatched antenna system caused a significant energy to be created off frequency, and someone tuned on frequency to your signal won't hear that. First time I heard this was a station in Cuba. I heard two signals spaced a couple kilohertz apart, same as this. I could copy both just fine from Cuba. So that is what that was. See, I didn't, I didn't know that for a fact until yesterday, but now I've seen it. So ain't never too old to learn, huh? So not only does mismatch bring a numerical mismatch by the amount of power reflected, but in that case, it also led to transmitting a noticeable amount of power off frequency, and that's a violation of FCC rules. We're not allowed to transmit with dirty, trashy transmitters. So, the myth of a little SWR doesn't matter because it's not much power is false. Gate BYP, exploding myths. Dit, 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 dit.